aware that actual adult human beings get together for a Grand Prix of Othello every year and have been doing this since 1977? I was kind of shocked. Sure, it might not have the cultural gravitas of chess or the anthropological curiosity of Scrabble, but apparently there's an Othello community out there that has nothing to do with Shakespeare. And most of it's in Japan. Of the 37 World Championships, Japanese players have taken the title 27 times. It's kind of a big deal, and I have no idea why. But this is 1999, and Othello hasn't had cute collectible animals pushed onto it yet, so let's fix that. You're playing Othello, sandwiching discs of some jerk's color between discs of your own to convert them to your side against various animals. That's you down there, that dopey-eyed looking kid. One day, after winning a trophy for being the one person who showed up for an Othello tournament, you come upon a small pile of protoplasm on the sidewalk after which a mouse challenges you to a game. A bright blue mouse. Perhaps it's suffering from hypothermia, perhaps not. Point is, you play Othello against it. But it's not that cut and dried, oh no. Before you actually get down to the game, it's quiz time where you're tasked with answering questions about Othello from the most painfully basic, like, what are the two colors in Othello? To presenting you the mock-up of a board and asking you to determine the most strategically sound play. And that's where the game gets kind of strange. There is most certainly a strategy to playing Othello, and Othello Millennium is here to judge you, you hideous, rotting bag of flesh. From its cold superiority as a computer, it's prepared to cheer your particularly excellent plays and jeer your bonehead moves behind the guise of the various forms your protoplasm takes. It starts out as just a blob, but with each gift you receive from the animals you play against, it'll step up the evolutionary ladder a couple times, perhaps forming itself into... a... a, a squiddle? Look, I never said it was particularly spectacular. Heck, I've had to show most of this review in Fast Forward because the AI takes frickin' forever to make its move sometimes. Of course, Othello being a two-player game, it would be ridiculous if Othello Millennium didn't have a two-player mode. Fortunately, it does this by a pass-and-play mode rather than requiring two people to each have copies of this nonsense. That's a bit outside the realm of feasibility. Heck, it took Felicity and Worcestershire just to send us this copy, which might be one of maybe one in the country right now. I guess this whole review's just been leading up to the moment where I get to reveal once and for all what the damn fox says. There you go. That's what the fox really says, and I, for one, am glad to have this whole matter cleared up. Good night.